Next up is uh, the rear end. Getting an early bay to drive nice, even with a, a lowering job like this one. Uh, it's not super, super slammed. Not like the, the single cap, but uh, a good a good lowering job with uh, good driving abilities afterward. I have a couple of tricks for this, and this is my normal setup. Again, there's other ways to do this, but uh, I like to do it this way. So, first things first, I really like uh, the adjustable spring plates you can buy from all different brands. Um, you can adjust your height here just with the with a screw, and um, yeah, that's the one benefit. The other benefit is uh, if you just lower it, the wheel will be like this when um, when you head up in the air, and it's almost impossible to get it off without taking air out or uh, a crowbar to push the wheel down. So. With the adjustable springs, they, the wheel kind of just fall down on its own when you're taking off the shock. If you um, have a lower shock, as I have on this one, if you're using stock, the wheel will all, almost fall completely down. That's the one thing. The other thing I like is uh, these horseshoes that sits in here. This is this one. I can find a um, picture of it. A horseshoe is like this. It um, it sits on top of it like this. This is a uh, spring plate you can buy in aftermarket, and it does like this. So we go out and look at the, the car again. But basically, it makes your your uh, your ears arm go to this and the hub up here. So if you come here. You can see like this. I just have to move my lamp. If I did, didn't have the horseshoes on, this trading arm or ERS arm would be way up here in these four bolts. By using a horseshoe, you can drop your uh, IRS arm a bit lower, quite a lot actually. Two things uh, that works for this is one: imagine if my ERS arm was way up here, it would hit the the frame of the car and make a noises that's one thing and it would make a lot of camper because this piece would be way up here and make the wheel go this i have found ways to compensate for that i take uh, the yes arms and flip them from side to side why i do that is because uh, the arms have a different uh, angle on uh, each side, they are not uh, identical, but it, it makes sense if you flip them, you get the uh, camber uh, back again. Not perfect, but pretty good if in compared to not doing it. So, like this, you have the hub further up. It would normally be uh, right here. So get a good lowering job, get uh, the alignment better, and your yes arm is more straight. I usually do this because when you have a, some load in it, you have to have a little groove for the axle booth to go uh, through. Normally it would just be flat here, but I make a little a groove so the axle when, when um, uh, the sub suspension is uh, traveling and there's room for the axle, not hitting the frame. Some people are making a way bigger uh, notch, but uh, I do it settle and uh, this is okay for me. I'm getting old. I don't want to go super slammed anymore. And when uh, we are here, again, if you, you're using aftermarket wheels like uh, I do, it could be almost any aftermarket wheel. If you have an early bay, you would have problem with your axle going uh, through and you cannot have your center caps on. So if you take a uh, axle from a late bay this is one in here it looked like this this is an uh, early bay axle and um, the benefit of this if you have a late bay the, th the threads will stop here 
so you don't have that's more going through um, the rear drum and uh, if you take a little bit of the drum off and make it the, the right right uh, width you can have um, you have a center caps on because you don't have a, 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 this much uh, going through and uh, out of the wheel so it's it makes it it's a little more um, convenient and look more cool that you don't have a, a axle ball sticking out on your your rims so um, I usually do this so an, an early bay doesn't work you have to get a late bay as you see no axle sticking through you couldn't have done this with a, an early bay an early bay would have been way up here and it sits nice and uh, there's room so good times the next thing i do with the lowering slash driving a good early bay is fit a type 1 trans transmission into this car instead of uh, the bus one type 2 so this is run from a late buck with IRS, so you get the IRS system. And I especially like the AM model of this kind of ratio because of the 1600cc engine I have. You can get a transmission with a longer travel um, ratio, but um, for this application it's perfect together. You get the RPM drop about 500 uh, going 100 and um, it's lighter. The shifting is better. On type 2 you have uh, two different stages of um, uh, hockey sticks inside the transmission house before you get to the, the shifter. On uh, type 1 you only have one step so it's easier to uh, get a, a more firm shift on your car. Again there's more ways to do this. I use it completely simple. This is the original Type 2 transmission mount. I have cut down, making new holes that fit the, the front mount of the Type 1 transmission. This is one with the three ball system. You can get it with two, but uh, it works pretty good. You can use the stock um, shift linkage if you do it my way. If you don't, you have to make this a little bit longer uh, because the transmission hockey stick is a little bit shorter than um, the Type 2. But what I, what I do uh, is I leave it with the stock one, because when you are out driving and it goes bad, you don't have to worry about uh, using a shift linkage you have customized to fit this one. Uh, but it just bolts on like it is. But this, this bit, you have to find the room another place. And I did it. In this end. So instead of uh, making my shift linkages longer, I just uh, extended the shift linkages in the front by yeah a couple of uh, yeah I think 10-15 millimeters. It looks a bit uh, weird. It is that 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 is this much. This is just because I don't want uh, a welt uh, inside where I have my uh, my pin for the for a rear goes so uh, this is just why it's over here extend this one keep it with a stock shift linkage in the back and you're good to make a type 1 transmission work on um, an early bay you have some things you have to do you have to consider what kind of uh, hub you want to do do because type 2 have a hundred millimeter boot and a type 1 transmission have the 90 millimeter boot there's two different ways to do this you can change this flange with one from a uh, kubelwagen or late late kubelwagen from the 70s they are 100 and just bolt on the transmission from the type 1 but you cannot do another thing which i found out if you can take the axle boot from a type 1 it fits perfectly over the axle and then you can just bolt it on i do the same thing on my singular cap and it runs with 150 horsepower plus and it had not broken yet so uh, you can easily do that and then it just bolts on everything to make a transmission from a volkswagen uh, type 1 work there is some customization to do to get it work uh, the clutch cable uh, alignment is a bit different 
I used it like this. You can wheel it, you can do everything, but this, this is type 2 um, clutch uh, bracket here, and I just customize it to work with type 1. The type 1 would sit way up here and would not be long enough for, for doing like this, but this is a stock um, cable from type 2, and it works perfectly. And um, that's the way I do it. You can keep your stock engine mount in the front, you can use your stock engine mount in the back and everything just fits pretty good. I have a little plan to use this one and make a bracket that goes through the frame so when you're putting the uh, taking the engine out you don't have to have a strap going on the here to uh, to keep the transmission not falling down but uh, that's not yet. That's, that's coming later. If you want to change your bolt pattern there's not so many ways to do it on a on an early bay, you can do three kind of uh, bolt patterns. The old one like this, with its stock, then you can fit uh, an early bay five by 130 Porsche uh, drum that will fit just on it. You only have to do is cut a bit down for the, the late bay is axle, and then you're good to go. And the last thing you can do which uh, yeah, will take a little work, is get the complete rear hub and spring plate and ERS arm from a, from a late bay and you can bowl it on your early bay. Then you have 5 by 112. I have drums from, um, from 5 to 130 or Porsche pattern, Porsche pattern on this one. And here you can see the same stuff. And there's a little groove behind it where the the sims I showed you before is, but this is a Porsche pattern, rear drums, and then in front, yeah, just an adapter on disc brakes, so that works pretty good. And so you can see, not a lot of camber, considering how low this is, so imagine a car with not so much lowering is even better with less camber so go for it hope you can you can teach uh, yourself a little bit about this and um, make some good bay windows drive follow me on uh, youtube on the name on the screen and subscribe and um, i will make some more videos of how to do it if, if people like it maybe we can do it about this one uh, with the air, sus air ride suspension and how I've done it. See you later.